I'm Janis Hildebrandt and I'm the leader of Project Nixus. And today I'm going to explain our latest rocket, the X4B, which just launched at the European Rocketry Challenge. So I'm going to take you over to the whiteboard here. First of all, uh, how does a rocket work in general? Well, some of us have probably already seen a rocket launch. So uh, the most prominent thing about the launch is always the hot gas coming out of the end of the rocket. Uh, so what's actually happening there? Well, if you look at the uh, nice schematic that we have here. So uh, if you break the hot gas exhaust down to an incremental tiny particle of mass, uh, it has a certain velocity. And so the mass times the velocity uh, generates the momentum that gets expelled out of the back of the rocket. And due to Newton's third law, you know, the force from the gas is the same as the force that acts on the rocket. And so the velocity change that is acted on the gas um, translates to a velocity change on the rocket. Uh, so this is uh, sort of, it translates to a conservation of uh, momentum. So the more momentum you can expel out of your rocket in the back, the more momentum you get into your rocket and you get into the sky. Right? So to generate hot gas, you need some sort of combustion. Generally, combustion needs a fuel and oxidizer. For us, the fuel is uh, ethanol, it's, uh, basically alcohol, and the oxidizer is liquid oxygen, right, right here. And in order to burn them, we need to combine them in a combustion chamber. This happens with feed lines. So at the bottom of each tank, we have a feed line that uh, goes into the engine. This ethanol has to be fed outside of the rocket. We have a raceway, uh, goes around, and then through our main valves. These can be uh, closed so that we can shut off the propellant flow and we can stop our combustion or start it. So uh, the ethanol gets fed around here, and then the oxygen goes from the tank straight into the engine. Now, why does the ethanol not also go into the top of the engine? Well, the combustion gets really, really hot. In fact, it gets so hot that our engine would melt if we didn't cool it. So in order to cool it, we feed our ethanol through sort of a double wall on the outside of the chamber, and it actively cools our chamber. I can show you later, right? So these propellants, of course, don't go into the engine by themselves. They need to be convinced. So uh, that can be, for example, done by a pump or by some other sort of pressure. So for us, we have a pressure-fed system is what it's called. So this is what this additional tank here is for, the nitrogen tank. We have some high-pressure nitrogen that gets transferred into our propellant tanks, and this pressure in the propellant tanks pushes the propellant into the engine. And that's what these guys are for here, uh, pressure reducers. So the nitrogen is stored at a very high pressure, but we don't actually need that high pressure in the propellant tanks. So the pressure reducers allow us to set the tank pressure that we actually want for the propellant tanks. And then above the nitrogen tank, we have our flight computer. It controls the valves so that they go through a sequence that we actually want for the, for the launch. It's a long story. And then in the same segment, we also have our payload. Uh, we fly scientific payloads um, to gather data on our flight and not just launch into the air for no reason. So for example, at Euroc, we flew some luminescent algae, a really cool experiment. And above this section, we have the recovery section. Uh, we want the recovery section because we don't want our rocket to just impact the ground at Mach 1 or Mach 2 or whatever. We want to have a parachute on board so that our rocket can touch down gently and be safely recovered. Now, uh, we have our rocket right here that we launched at Euroc, uh, but if we take a look at it, we can see that actually it didn't touch down as gently as we, as we would have liked. Uh, this is not because our recovery system failed. This is because we had some really bad weather conditions when we launched and we were not allowed to fully deploy our recovery system for safety reasons. So that is why we impacted at about 100 kilometers an hour. Here we can see the same thing in real life, so to speak, so in our hardware. Uh, we have the fin can over here. It sort of passively steers our rocket into the right direction through uh, these, these fins right here. And under the fin can we have uh, our engine section, uh, which is where the combustion happens that I just showed you on the schematic. Uh, this is a 3D print of our engine. And you can see, if you look closely, that we have this double wall that I mentioned earlier, where the ethanol can flow through and actively cool our engine. Uh, more on that in another video. Coming from the fin can, we see the liquid oxygen tank, and then a pressurization segment where we have the pressure reducer and some valves. Then uh, an ethanol tank, the same thing again, we need to reduce our pressure again in this valve section. Here's uh, the nitrogen tank segment, and then above we have uh, the payload, uh, flight computer, and then recovery. So if you enjoyed this uh, short explanation, give us a like, and if you have any questions, comment down below. 
We're going to answer all your questions and stay tuned for the next video in two weeks.